ladies and gentlemen, this, this deserves a bit of a woo. Uh, as I've been told by the bods out back that we've got about 6,000 to 8,000 um, of you with us at the moment, watching on, um, yeah, watching on the internet. And uh, we can track where you are. It sounds ever so scary. It sounds like Big Brother at work, doesn't it? But we know exactly where you are this evening. And I can say hello to uh, you lot in Slovakia uh, this evening. Hello if you're watching us in France, uh, Indonesia as well, Mexico, Turkey, Canada, and Egypt. That's, that's how far we're going this evening. And also, um, thank you to all of you, a huge amount of you, who are tuning in in Norwich. I just assume there's nothing better to watch on the television this evening. So it's good to have all of you uh, with us here um, this evening. Right, ladies and gentlemen, um, James Tosland. I, th I believe he's in the building. <laughs> so who's got questions for him, by the way? <laughs> oh, this q and is going to go well, isn't it? Right, I just want a few of you to think of a, a couple of questions. Oh, there he is. There he is. Good to see you. Good to see Sorry, let me just pop my, um, my glasses there. Right, how are you doing, sir? I'm very well. You? Yeah, I'm very well, thank you. Is this your first time in this building? Yeah, first time in Epic, yeah. Um, I've just been flown down uh, in a mad journey from, from Scarborough to, to here just, just tonight, so it's been pretty cool. You, you look like you've just jumped off a plane as well, actually. It looks like it's a bit of a daze to come in here and see all these people. It is, yeah. Um, you know, I didn't think I was going to be able to make it with the... Um, because the Silverstone MotoGP is this weekend for, for the uh, uh, for the British Grand Prix, and um, I've been preparing for that with the with the BBC and and, and getting together um, with the, an album that I'm writing as well um, this year, um, and it's uh, it's going great. Well, we'll come on to your music in a second because that's really exciting. Just um, stick with the sport for a moment. It's good to see that it's on the BBC and it's getting a high profile again. No, it is. It's amazing, and um, you know, it's great that the British guys uh, are having a good shot at it as well with Cal Crutchlow. Um, you know, he's, I think he's fourth in the championship still. Uh, and uh, to have a British rider up there in, in the elite class, um, you know, I know how tough it is in that class, it's, uh, uh, and he's doing a great job. Yeah. I do political commentary for the BBC, which probably is the most, well, some would say the most boring thing that you can talk about, politics and the economy. It just goes around in circles, really. Same old di scripts, different day. Uh, but when it comes to commentary and analysis on sport like that, do you ever find yourself sitting there thinking, well, what do I say? It's a race. Well, a little bit, but, you know, because I've been involved in it and I, and I race myself. Um, I know so much technical stuff about the bikes that um, I'm sure I could bore you to tears and <laughs> make everybody fall asleep. But um, James, do you ever have that awful moment when you're sitting there, you're talking to the camera, and you think, wait a minute, now, is this interesting or is this boring? Well, you've got to, uh, especially BBC, because you've got to understand that a lot of the audience watching um, aren't necessarily bike fans, but they're enjoying just watching the, the racing. Um, and they, d they don't know a lot about motorcycling itself, but obviously a lot do. But So you, you've, got to, you've got to give enough information for the bike fans that understand a lot about racing, but you've obviously got to cater for the ones that are, are, are really just want to hear about what they're doing on that particular corner. Yeah, this is the point that I confess that I'm, a, I'm rugby mad, I'm football mad, I'm a Norwich City fan. Um, yeah, yeah. That got approval, but earlier on in the night I said, um, I've never ridden a bike before. And that didn't go down so well, obviously. Uh, but I was watching the other day uh, with my father-in-law, who is bike mad, and I said, this is going to be boring. And he said, just watch it. And I was hooked. I was hooked after about 20 minutes. There's something extremely exciting about it, isn't there? Oh, uh, once, you, once, it, once it's in your blood, um, it never goes away. And, and I think, uh, you know, with the community of motorcyclists as well, um, they, they really take you on board. And, um, you'll never find any, any fights. You'll never find any trouble at, at motorcycle events. Um, you'll find kids from all ages going, and, and adults of all ages. You know, I, I know, I know this uh, old lady in the village that used to support me. She was 92, and she was in an electric wheelchair. <laughs> she was absolutely the maddest fan I ever had, kind of thing. And um, uh, and it goes from everything, all genres as well, from doctors to surgeons to to dentists, uh, and the whole field of, of all kinds of different jobs that are into it. Do you think she secretly wanted to have a go on the track herself? She was quick enough. The way she went through Kibben Park, she was <laughs> she, she could get a job. <laughs> Okay, all right then, we're going to come on to music now, because I know music has been something that's been in your blood since you are a, a wee one, a young chap, and it's interesting, because we always concentrate on the best thing that somebody is, is good at, so for you it's sport, and it's riding a bike, um, but music's in your DNA. Yeah, I, well I learned to play the piano before I rode motorcycles, uh, my grand plays the piano, and uh, I lived with my grandparents when I was younger, and, uh, and, and she taught me to play then. Uh, so from seven or eight, I had, I had lessons uh, up until I was 15, 16, before I went world championship racing with the motorcycling. Um, and I played in a covers band for 12 years. Um, unfortunately, I had to retire from motorcycling in September. And 
you know, I made the decision to, to really focus on, on my music and uh, um, I'm seven tracks in now, seven or eight tracks in now on, on the album I'm producing um, with a guy called Toby Jepson who was in a big band in the 80s called The Little Angels and um, hopefully we can uh, go in the studio and we can have a launch date of the album pretty soon. Yeah, it's difficult, isn't it? Because, um, well, that got approval. <laughs> have you actually heard the album yet? It's crap. No, I'm joking. <laughs> um, the th- I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. Um, you know, the, the thing that I think, though, is that you, um, in your sport, you've done extremely well. You're very distinguished. You're a world champion at a young age. And then all of a sudden, you have this uh, accident. You've got the problem with, is it both your hands? That Just the one hand? Yeah, they sound like both on the piano, but it's just one. <laughs> <laughs> I look forward to that. Right. Um, and then all of a sudden, was it like your world fell apart a bit? Because you had that decision. I knew you could have continued racing, couldn't you? But you decided, no, I'm going to stop and call it a day. Well, I, I knew after coming back after the injury uh, two races in, I couldn't ride like I used to. Um, and if I can't ride like I used to, I wouldn't be have a chance of winning. And um, when you have one, um, it's, uh, uh, you know, I, I, I hated finishing second, you know, never mind eighth with a wrist problem. Um, and uh, I knew I was a danger to myself if I couldn't compete at the top. And uh, I'd had a good time. You know, I'd won the World Championship twice. And, um, and uh, yeah, thank you. Um, <laughs> Uh, and, and I didn't. I, 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 it would have been harder for me just to fade away slowly with my wrist injury. Well, you, s- you said something very interesting, and forgive me if I've got this wrong, and I can't quote you directly because it was when you won the sports person, or you were third in the sports personality. Is that right? Fourth. Fourth. <laughs> I mean, who's r- who's written these notes? Oh, no. You know, I, 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 I could have let you go with that one. <laughs> <laughs> you should just gone. Yes, yes. Um, but there was one. Th- I remember you saying this actually. Uh, because I was saying to a friend the other day that you have, th- you must have that fear factor when you're on a bike and you're going around like that, and uh, and that sport is so fast and it is dangerous. But you said the only fear that you can take out on the track is that the fear that you're going to become, s- you're going to come second. Mm. Yeah, oh, well, completely. I mean, yeah, I, I, you wait, if you watch the race, and if if I watch it back sometimes now, I, I I thought I must have been bloody crazy to do what I did. Um, but when you're doing it, it's a different matter. And when you're on the bike, even though you're doing over 200 miles an hour, um, n- never once did you feel out of control. And when you did, you were usually on your ass before you could think it anyway. Um, <laughs> so it's so on, how bad is it to come off a bike then? Go on, tell us, tell us about your worst accident. Uh, well, my, my worst one was probably Cadwell Park in 2000. I was testing and I fell off and hit the curb uh, on the outside and it snapped my leg in three or four places and it, it and my leg ended up around my head. You know when I landed. So, um, so okay, when you're sitting there on the side in the gravel and your legs around your head and you're looking up the sky. Did you ever think, why? I thought this is usually a woman's behind, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, thought I, I thought I'd done really badly. I thought I'd done really badly. I'm thinking, Jesus Christ, has this woman got size nine feet? <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, the, the worst of it was, um, joking aside, was that it was an air ambulance job, so the helicopter landed. Um, and the worst part of it was, was they had to straighten the leg to get me in the helicopter. Um, and that, that was nasty. I'm not going to ask you to talk me through that moment. I can just imagine that that was absolutely grim. Right, back to the music, because uh, in many ways that's why we're here this evening. Music in your DNA. Um, I read that you're now engaged to Katie Melua, which is pretty exciting. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, James, is this the closest thing to crazy that you've ever been? <laughs> <laughs> you've nicked my bloody speech. Um, yeah, I, and that's helped as well, you know. It's been a tough time to, to retire, but um, just to meet Katie while I was injured, actually. I actually went to one of her concerts with my mum. I took my, took my mum to one of her concerts uh, in Sheffield, um, and the p- piano player of her band is a massive motorcycle fan and spotted me in the audience, and that's how it all started, because he e- emailed me, and then I, I, I met her here in Norwich. Oh, really? yeah. do, do you want to tell us the story? Because we want to hear it. Um, well, th- I... I came uh, after the Sheffield gig. They, they they were playing in Norwich. They were doing a UK tour. Uh, the uh, piano player emailed me and said, "Really nice to see you at the gig. If you want to come to another one, let me know." And I wasn't racing because I was injured. And, um, so I came down here and saw them. Then I was backstage um, with the band. And then Katie came in the room. And and how it all started was for, for for them giving me the ticket. I said to the piano player, "Well, I do track days at some motorcycle circuits, and I'll get you on the back of the bike and I'll take you around the track to say thank you." And he was so pleased about that, but uh, Kirsty, that's my (laughs) sister-in-law. Careful. You know what, Katie? I hope you're not watching at home. We can't edit this, it's live. (laughs) Kirsty's my brother's wife, so, you know, I've got... Oh, it gets better. (laughs) Ladies and gentlemen, it gets better. 
And if you're from the Daily Mail, <laughs> go on, carry on. <laughs> I don't know, I'm going to save that one. Um, yeah, Kate came back, and, then, and, and when I said that, she said, oh, no, bugger Jim, I'd love to do that. And that's where the uh, excuse to get the number and get, 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 get things going, obviously. And uh, um, uh, it's just been, you know, with, with having to, because I didn't know I was going to have to retire at that point. I, was, I still got the pins in the wrist, and then obviously it came to that, and then obviously falling for Kate massively, and we get married in September this year, which I'm looking forward to. A, a brother day. Congratulations. Um, one can only imagine how talented the children are going to be, but the question to you is which way would you want them to go? If they start showing signs of talent in motorsport, do they go that way or do they go into music? Um, I hope we have a girl, to be fair. Um, <laughs> um, but um, but uh, Katie's brother's in tonight, because Katie's brother's a lead guitarist in my band as well, um, and, and that's going great as well. So it's... Uh, um, but, you know, yeah, the, the, the children aren't on aren't, aren't the cars just yet, but um, I'm really looking forward to the wedding in September, and, and it's been an amazing roller coaster ride over the last year. If someone said I was going to have to finish racing and get married, yeah, yeah. I don't know if I'd have maybe jumped off the bridge there and then. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's all turned out well. The music's really exciting um, because it's something that you've always wanted to do. I'm interested in the fact that you chose piano because I have this debate with people all the time, and everyone always says, oh, you know, I want to go into guitar, I want to go into drums. Fine great instruments, but I think that the piano is one of those instruments that we don't really pay enough attention, we don't respect enough. Yeah, I think so, And yeah, but I got away with it because I, I had a motorbike for Christmas when I was a kid, uh, just at the stage where uh, I was getting quite a lot of digs for being a piano player. Um, it wasn't the coolest thing, as you can imagine, but when I rocked up with a motorbike at school and then I got all my friends to come on the local pit and, and, and ride the bike, uh, I, I, was, I couldn't have been any cooler, so I went to my piano lessons on the sly, didn't, never told anybody, and then you know, when I won my first World Superbike race, one of my sponsors bought me a nine-foot Steinway. Um, and the BBC covered it and, and then told the whole bloody world I played the piano. Um, <laughs> but by that time, I was cool enough as a motorcyclist to get away with playing the piano as well. So it didn't really matter then. Fantastic. Okay. Well, um, I know that, you know, the problems with the hands as well following the accident probably makes it e more difficult to play at times. And you were saying it sounds like you're playing with one hand, so, you know... But I think actually to go through all of that and to continue playing, do you do any wrist exercises? No. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what? That wasn't a leading question if you're watching Katie or if you're watching Kirsty. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Kirsty doesn't help with that. Katie does that. Yeah. Um, now, I, uh, joking aside though, I have to sit further to the left because my wrist doesn't bend as much. I have to sit further to the left on the stool to play the piano. I know that's because uh, I could get into that joke, but I'm just going to get myself even <laughs> deeper. Well, it's really good to see you tonight. It's lovely to have you here this evening. Um, thank you ever so much for flying down. We've got questions and answers with you later, Q&A session, and I know that all this lot um, are stuffed full of questions they want to throw in your direction, aren't you? Yeah. Okay. All right, then. And also, um, for all of you who are with us at home this evening, and I said that we've got roughly about six to 8,000 of you at the moment um, from some pretty exclusive destinations around the globe, then, of course, you're welcome to throw your, your questions um, in the way of James. Uh, you can do it online right now on the stream that you're watching on. Throw them through to us, and I'll put them in his direction. The funnier, I wouldn't say the ruder the better, but the funnier the better. So get them in um, now.